Hey guys, what's happening? So, just picked this up on uh, OfferUp. Saw this last night. And, uh, yeah, I couldn't pass it up. Take a look. It's a 10 scale. Obviously, it's a monster truck, but um, it's going to make sense why I wanted this one. <laughs> really, I wanted it for the body. But, yeah, it's kind of like a, uh, a Traxxas clone. I couldn't figure out what it was at first. Um, you know, at first I thought it was a Trax, it's a 2.5. But I guess it's some smart tech um, clone of a Traxxas, I guess. I'm not sure. But it doesn't have like a lot of the features. Um, you know, uh, like uh, electric start. It didn't have the reverse. Looks like there's a spot for the servo. Uh, the guy that I got this from was a serious like RC enthusiast. Got like 20, 30 cars. So, um, yeah, I'd like to get this going again. But if you're new to my channel, then. I have the real one. So when I saw that RC car body, <laughs> you know, couldn't pass that thing up. So here. So all right. Yeah, that's an early Bronco Nitro car. So it has a 15. Uh, not really the best. It has a side side exit 15. I think that the rear exit ones are better, but uh, there's no way to get a bump box on here, so you have to get like either a pull start or electric start. This actually went out to pull start. But uh, yeah, since I don't know anything about this car, I'm going to take the fuel tank out and uh, ultrasonic clean it, clean all the hoses. And uh, there's actually like a four double A's, but I do actually have a light bulb pack that I'm going to use. So it cost me 140 bucks, as is, just the way it is. but. Really, I just wanted a, the body that was cool. So, um, yeah, I didn't really need another nitro truck. So, I'm back up to three again. So, the cool thing is I have an extra receiver. So, my yeah, 2.4 gig uh, receiver. But yeah, I want to clean the engine. I want to take the engine apart. Uh, nitro or ultrasonic, clean that too. Make sure it's all clean. Make sure there's not, uh, not going to run a bunch of dirt through it, you know, and scuff up the piston. But all right, get this going. <laughs> another nitro car. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not really. I mean, when I first started an RC in like the '80s, um, I had like RC tens. I was really young. I started out when I was like 10 years old building these things. And that's kind of where I uh, kind of learned. That was my first experience with like anything mechanical and electrical was uh, RC cars. Yeah, I guess about like eight years old, probably seven or eight years old. I can't remember. But uh, that was the first time I ever actually had built anything that was mechanical gears and it had like electronics and batteries and. So a lot of my stuff, my background is that, or well, at least got me into mechanical stuff. Um, all right, so I'm gonna get this thing apart. We'll get it going. Cool. Look, up, look at the uh, what's it called? The tank. It's pretty crazy. So I'm gonna put that in there. I have a thing to keep it open. Get some air in there. One thing I noticed, I've never seen a tank like that where it actually has a drain, a drain plug at the bottom. So I gotta put some soap in there, I forgot that, and then um, I'm actually, instead of taking the engine out and ultrasonic cleaning that thing, I mean actually the compression feels really, really good. So I'm just gonna pull the receiver out. I'm not gonna use this receiver anyways. Uh, that way I get everything clean, uh, degrease everything. Um, I mean, the servos aren't great, like some cheapo servers from like 10, 15 years ago, but I don't have a reason to upgrade them. Let's see. Yeah, it has like some kind of I mean, it lo this looks just like a Traxxas, and it looks like the reverse gear might have been in there originally. I don't know if it's, who knows, but, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the pull starts. It gives me blisters on my hands right here, but, so I do actually might have some of my roto starts still, stuff still from my other 10 scale. Yeah, on-road car that I got rid of. Yeah, I, I just actually get my best cars, and then, but, yeah, so I might just take this off and use my little roto start thing, because this is a headache. All right, little O'Reilly's engine degreaser. Doing a couple of coats on this thing. Put it the out. All right, just spray a little silicone on there. Put that soak in. Yeah, I am gonna take the engine off. Yeah, I don't wanna run it. There's a bunch of gunk in the back of it, so I got I gotta replace the pull string anyways with the roto start. 
and then uh, yeah, it has a broken bumper, so I'm gonna log into my Fusion 360 and design a new uh, bumper for it. All right, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and loop everything up with my tri-flow and the joints here. From what I could read online, um, this truck is probably about, I'm guessing, 15 to 20 years old. Came out like in 2002. I actually ordered some new springs. So, I mean, this looks identical to a Traxxas 2.5. Um, so, ordered some new blue springs for it. Um, yeah, because I don't know what the guy did in the back here. Those aren't the factory springs. But the back it rides low. It won't actually hold up. So, or like I said, I'm going to be changing the servo out to a newer one I have, a metal, all metal servo. Plus, I actually uh, I use LiPo batteries now, so it's uh, a little bit higher voltage. Hey, right, just got the engine out. And it looked like it was missing the clip that held the uh, clutch balancing on. So, two shoe clutch. So it looks like it's a full shaft engine, not like one of those. So that's kind of weird. No, it's actually a short shaft because that's actually part of the clutch material. So it's <clears throat> I wanted to maybe. I don't want to sell water coming in there. I do actually have a couple of um, still have some of those small box, a Pico and an OS. <laughs> I can maybe throw on there. <laughs> I don't know. But all right. <clears throat> Hey, this looks pretty good. Not bad. Yeah, pretty clean in there. So I guess I'll, I'll run it the way it is. I mean, even the crank is not rusty. That's cool. Cool, I'm glad I had that laying around. Yeah, I'm never going to go back to that again. Been there, done that. Alright, well, I will take the transmission apart while I'm down here. Make sure that's all good, too. But I noticed, like, these are all loose again. So I don't know if that's supposed to be good. Um, yeah, this one's real bad. In and out. I mean, I know it needs to be sort of loose with the brake, but not like that. All right. Um, yeah, because the set screws in there are tight. All right, I'm going to pull the transmission apart. But I know that the Traxxas one actually has nylon gears. And I noticed that this thing is lubed up. So I'd like to see if this is actually either metal or nylon. Here are the holes. Yeah, I can see that it's lubed up in there. I can't tell if they're metal or not. So, yeah, I, but the tracks is, it looks like you would actually have the, re, the reverse gear would be right here. Okay, so it looks like the gearbox is not totally watertight because it uh, looks like I got a lot of water in there when I cleaned it off. So, yeah, but it is lubed up, so, and it feels like nylon gear, so, um, actually it's a two-speed, too, I was reading online. It's crazy um, for, like, a, for a monster truck. Normally a monster truck, you wouldn't mean, you wouldn't normally see, like, a, like a two-speed. You know, like my Muga right there, it's only a single speed. All right, so my, uh, one of my previous builds, I actually had one of these servos, all metal servos, cheapo uh, Amazon servos. So yeah, this one actually has a lot of play in it, so. I think it's plastic too, the original. So, place it with the metal gear one, and also a new metal arm. Yeah, I'm printing out, uh, I'm designing new uh, receiver trays and uh, battery holders. All right, so I got the new servo in. Uh, I'm not gonna totally tighten it down, you know, tighten all the uh, bolts down, just because I want to get the receiver in and fire it up. Then I'll make the final adjustments in the steering. Yeah, I tighten everything down. I mean, this is a cheap engine. There's definitely a lot of playing and crankshaft. Uh, let's see that right there. But I did actually shim and fix the echo clutch. There was a lot of play there too. So having all the extra play, man, makes everything super loud. Clank, 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 clank. It can also chip your spur gear. So I got the engine and pipe back on. Um, I actually I fixed it the right way with the pin. And before the guy just had a zip tied to the to the uh, chassis here. So yeah, I like that cool gray pipe. It's pretty cool. But yeah, on the uh, spur gear, you don't want it too tight. You just want this to spin freely. You don't want it to bind up. But also you want, I mean, not too much lash where you're going to strip the gears. I saw some pictures of the original setup, and they were all wrapped around the head kind of all crazy so I actually wanted it more organized and clean under here all right so as I've been restoring this thing um, I've been creating new parts I just think improvements or fixing this uh, cheap plastic which breaks real easy so I created a new uh, receiver box and actually I have a Sky RC one of those little 
mic receiver, six channel with the built in, um, what's it called, the uh, auto gyro. And then um, this new battery box. And I created it so I can actually, because I'm going to pull my batteries out of here. I run a LiPo battery. Well, can't get in there with one hand, but um, still needs to get worked on a little bit too. So, yeah, creating some battery boxes, getting all the servos dialed in. All right, got this car seat here, and I've got the throttle going. Everything's open, make sure the carbs open all the way. Yeah, I wanted to upgrade to these uh, digital servos with the uh, 7.2 volts because I'm running a LiPo battery. So I'm open. So I gotta adjust the steering, but there's actually a lot of play slopping this thing. So I gotta figure that out. Yeah, my truck had this weird non-adjustable servo saver. So I was able to uh, add actually an extra washer on there. It was a headache, I had to compress it. So um, yeah, I used the M5 uh, screw, bolted it, and pressed it down. All right, just got these springs in. Uh, yeah, one of the issues with this thing was that, uh, yeah, this actually, this video is gonna, it's over like a, probably a couple week period. So I can't remember what I said the last time. But uh, yeah, so what's weird is the guy on the back had different kind of springs. But see, it doesn't move up like that. Kind of wants to ride low. I mean, I could put some like spacers in here, but you know, this thing is just you know a smaller spring, so I want to make it more springy. Uh, these were for a Trax is 2.5. Um, also, the servo saver. I think I, I showed that in my other video um, or the other clip. Um, the servo saver is just, just shot on this thing. Um, but it's not the original 2.5 servo. I mean, it's not the, it's not the original Traxxas, so it's, it's different than the, the 3.3 and the 2.5. Um, so I did order a real, what's it called, um, Traxxas uh, 3.3 uh, uh, servo saver, what they call the bell crank. All right, so I gotta get these springs on. I'm gonna check the fluid. I'm gonna put like 30 weight fluid in there. Um, that's not left over from my Mugen uh, Truggy. And then uh, I actually, or like I scored some uh, new engines on uh, the offer up. So actually, this is gonna, this next carburetor I have, but you'll see them. There's some awesome engines. Ain't nobody about that. Uh, super good deal, 30 bucks each. So that'll be coming up next. All right. So these are actually our progressive rate springs. As you can see, the coil is uh, looser than it gets tighter at the top. So it's supposed to kind of give you the best of both worlds. You know, softness and, and firmness at the same time. So when you're cruising around, it's softer, but when you need the extra stuff, it's harder. All right, way spring here. I like it all the way up. So yeah, that's my front and uh, rear bumper. All this stuff will be on Fusion 360. So this receiver cover, or whole receiver box, battery box. Yeah, if you're wondering Drake, um, on my RC stuff, it's the name of my kid. So it's not Adam Drake, it has nothing to do with Adam Drake. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get my kid fired up on RC stuff, it's just, you know, modern kids just want to play on tablets and cell phones and video games. Alright, so I'm done for this weekend. Gotta wait for that servo saver to come in and then I'll get it, you know, I got pretty much everything dialed in except for that servo saver. What happens is the, the steering wheel doesn't go back to way the center. It stays off to one side. So. I mean, also that's going to create serious steering issues. But uh, yeah, I can't wait to show you my new engines I picked up on uh, Opera Up. Yeah, I can say one is made in Japan and one is made in Italy. All right, so another day, the uh, 3.3 uh, servo saver finally came in. So I can finally, hopefully, fix the steering here. Yeah, hopefully I don't have to modify too much, just because this is a this is well, what I found out is more research is that. This is considered a, a Traxxas like 1.5 or knockoff, I don't know, but it's more like the Traxxas Classic, the first version they ever came out with. Um, yeah, you can kind of tell because of the side port exhaust and a few different things. The steering servo setup. So yeah, it took me a while to figure that out, but yeah, so that's, hopefully the 3.3 .3 was actually an upgrade. I can tell by here. I'll flip this over real fast, you'll see what I'm talking about. This one was a uh, single, pretty weak right there. Yeah, I mean, definitely a much weaker design, so hopefully I can get that adapted and we'll uh, get going. Yeah, sorry for the background noise. Printing out a skid plate from the Mugen. Um, yeah, this is the new uh, little 
the, the, uh, the holds it. Well, the thing that holds the uh, servo saber, uh, the pivot arm. I don't even want to call it, but uh, yeah, it looks like the same uh, height. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, when I looked at the actual like the these right here, they looked all very similar. So that's why I, I kind of took the risk, and it's only 15 bucks, but yeah, I took the risk to. It, this seemed like it would actually work by looking at the diagrams. Yes, yeah, so I've got a much beefier design. So let's see if there's gonna be a little bit of rubbish right there. So I'm gonna take my Dremel tool and just take a little bit of material off there, just so I can get this in there. I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, this is definitely not a high-end car like the Mew gonna have. So I gotta remember that it's not a high-end car. <laughs> I'm not gonna get really great steering no matter what I do. Ready to fire this thing up. All right, this setup's a little bit different than my bump box. I actually have a Makita drill start. <coughs> you know, earlier I converted this over to the uh, roto start, and the exhaust is at the bottom. All right, got a little Byron's. Uh, this is only this 20% nitro. I do actually have other fuels up there, but yeah, I'm kind of bummed that went out of business. Byron's. So, um, all right. So I get my uh, new lipo low igniter, and uh, all right, let's fire this thing up. All right, got the engine primed, ready to go. RC Norton. Okay, first fire for this thing. This is a 15. Uh, some cheapo, uh, this is pretty cool. It gives you a green light when you're on. All right, got some glow. Work. I didn't check the golf <laughs> Alright, that's pretty cool. Yeah, this thing's actually already tuned. So I, I, I've got a tape ball through it. First time I've loosened up. That is <laughs> Probably hasn't run like 10 years. All right, guys, that's it. So, um, so I'm going up to actually Big Bear this weekend. I'm going to take it off roading up there. Just want to get some other few things dialed in. I'll actually finally get some video footage of me off roading one of these things. So instead of me just working on it, you'll actually we'll, we'll see him driving. So, all right, cool. Had fun. Uh, awesome little project here. Pretty cheap. <laughs>